Today, I'm going to take you along with me as I update some old wood pieces from thrift stores and garage sales into some fresh farmhouse style. Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Now I have three more spindles that are a little bit longer and this wood round that I picked up at my local Dollarama. It was a sign. I sanded the paper off as much as I needed to. And now I'm going to use the same glue to pre-glue these in place. And I let them set for a good hour before I did anything else with them. Once I was able to flip it over without the little legs falling off, I used my nailer to hold it in place. Now, if you don't have a nailer, you could definitely pre-drill some holes and just add a screw. Make sure that you sink it below the level of the wood circle because then you can just add a little bit of wood filler or some spackle and smooth out the top. So I'm back inside now and this is what this stand or stool or whatever you want to call it, little mini table, looks like upside down with the spindles on. I am using some black paint and this is folk art multi-surface paint. It's just what I happen to have on hand. It covers really really well but it doesn't stick to slick surfaces very well. So later on it when you see me working with this paint and another project, you're going to see some of the paint kind of come off the spindles because they still, of course, have all their varnish. But for this project, it's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing, top and bottom, in black. Originally, I thought I was going to paint it all white and then distress it back to the black and some of the brown on the spindles, but I decided to change things up and I'm just going to be painting the very top of this white. So in hindsight, I didn't need to paint the top of it black, but oh well, that's how it happens when you're crafting. Your mind kind of changes as you go. Once the paint was completely dry again, I am using a stencil for this. This is a French script stencil with some type of stamp on it, and I picked it up on Amazon. If I can find it again, I will link it for you down in my description box. And again, I'm just using a makeup sponge and some black paint, and I'm going to go ahead and stencil the whole thing on. And I think this turned out absolutely gorgeous. I really love this one. This mirror unit I found at a thrift store for $8. It's pretty heavy with the mirror in it, so I have decided to remove the mirror and just use the frame itself. The first thing I'm going to do is remove these screws that are holding the mirror in place, and I'm also going to remove the hangers and the paper backing. The mirror comes out really easily and I'm just going to set that aside. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. Here's what it looks like on the back. I'm going to clean up a little bit more of the paper and get it prepped for painting. The previous owner had put in these cup hooks and also another hook on the side. These are in really super tight so I had to use my needle nose pliers to get them started so I could remove them. When I get wood items from a thrift store and pretty much any item, I like to use disinfectant wipes to clean off all the surface. It gets all the dirt off, any of the grime. Then I let it dry for a few minutes and it'll be ready to go. I'm going to use this crack shot spackle just to fill in the holes from the cup hooks and those two little screw holes in the corner. I'm going to use Rust-Oleum chalked paint in linen white and just a regular dollar store brush, nothing fancy. I don't mind getting some brush strokes because I will be distressing this at the end and I'm going to make sure I get into all of those cracks and crevices. This project needed two coats. I love the look of the linen white, but I need to do some distressing. No farmhouse project would be complete without it. I'm using folk art chalk paint in the color Maui sand, which is a beautiful charcoal gray color. And I'm going to use this rough brush and just flick the brush across the edges. And that's just going to accentuate all of those ridges and those little corners and grooves. And it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. I'm also going to go around the outside edge 
edge of the window frame and make sure I do some on the bottom shelf too. The last thing to do is add some hangers so the person who gets this in their home can hang it on the wall properly. I like to use these self-leveling sawtooth hangers. They're called sawtooth hangers because of the ridges and they're self-leveling because there's lots of space for you to adjust your nail. I always need to hold my tiny little nail to attach these in my needle nose pliers because my fat fingers won't hang on to anything properly. But it just helps me get that nail started and I do that on both sides. This was a super easy project and I really love how it turned out. The second project I have for you today is a table that came from Bombay. I know this because it had a tag on the bottom of it and it stands really tall with these really tall legs and I didn't like that. So I'm going to be marking off four inches on each of the legs and I'm going to be cutting that down. I was fortunate enough to figure out that all of the legs came off. They just unscrewed very easily. So I was able to take these four legs out to my table saw in the garage and cut them down. Now that everything's all reassembled, I'm going to start painting it with Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the color charcoal. I started off just using a regular dollar store brush before remembering that I have a beautiful Bennett chalk paint brush that I love to use on furniture because it just gives such a nice smooth finish. So in a moment here you're going to see me switch out my brush. So this is the Bennett chalk paint brush that I love to use. It's a small one, it's round, and it just does an amazing job putting the paint on really nice and smooth. You can load up the brush and it just goes such a long way. They're beautiful brushes. I believe they might only be available in Canada, but if I can find a link on Amazon, I'll put it down in my description box. So I have flipped the table over and you can see the beautiful burgundy color again. It's so pretty. I just don't like burgundy at all. And it has quite a bit of a scratch in it on the top. Now this piece cost me all of $9 at the thrift store. So there was no way I was going to pass it up. The reason I'm painting it with the charcoal first is because of the burgundy stain. I don't want any of that red coming through at all. Even though it's got a top coat, I'm not taking any chances that it's going to bleed through. This is the reason why I painted it gray first is because I want to paint it white and I didn't want to take any chances of that red coming through and turning my white pink. I've had that experience before so I always make sure that I prime or use a different color underneath first. Gray is always the best color to block out any of the red, at least that's my experience. I'm also using the same chalk paint brush because it's just going to go on so much more smoother and I'm using Folk Art White Adirondack Paint. I had masked off the top part of the table because that's going to stay dark gray as my base. So now I'm just removing the painter's tape to show some nice clean lines of the white next to the gray. And if I did miss anything, I'll just touch it up with a tiny little brush. Now I'm going to be adding some more texture and dimension with some other folk art paints. The light gray is Parisian gray and the other color is rich black. I'm starting off with the Parisian gray and I've moved back to just a really cheap rough brush. This is a dollar store brush and I'm doing my dry brushing technique which is taking a little bit of paint onto my brush, dabbing it off and then going ever so lightly on top of my project to get some nice texture. I'm going to be layering this with a couple of different colors and I want to make sure that I don't go too heavy to start because I'm not quite sure of the look that I'm going for just yet. 
At first, I'm going across the project this way, and I'll probably change directions as well. You can see some of the brush strokes coming through from the chalk paint brush, but that's okay. I really love that different type of texture. It makes it look more rustic and authentic like wood. Now I'm using some of the black and I'm just going to darken up some of the edges and give it a little bit more texture. I, again, I'm going very lightly to start and then I'll probably layer a little bit more afterwards. These two knobs were on the front of the table, so I'm using some of my hammered metal finish spray paint in black and I'm just going to give these a nice couple of coats of spray paint. Once they're dry, I'm just adding them back on. They did come in two little pieces, so one is almost like a little flat washer and then the top part screws right in. It makes it look like it has some artificial drawers. The last thing to do is to seal my project. I'm using Minwax water-based polycrylic. It's in a clear matte finish. And one thing that I can recommend is make sure that your project is really nice and dry and almost fully cured. I like to wait a day or two before I put a top coat on. If you don't, you run the risk of some of the chalk paint pulling up and getting onto your brush. And especially when you've got some texture like I do here, you don't want that to happen. I am totally in love with this piece and I was originally going to sell it, but I have decided to keep it. I picked up this stool from the thrift store for $6.99 and it's really old. You can tell it needs some love. So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove the top of it. It just is being held together by four screws. So really easy to take apart. I cleaned the wood really well. I actually used a Lysol wipe and then I dried it, let it sit for a little bit. And then I decided to use my DIY chalk paint to paint it white. This was what inspired me from some of the Pinterest pictures that I saw. I love the white, but I was disappointed as I was painting this and it started to dry. I had some of the bleeding come through from this original color because it's just so old. So it was turning very yellow. I wanted to quickly show you the cute little turntable that I found at the thrift store. It's perfect for painting items like this when you just need to spin it around real quick. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but you can see here a little bit that it's starting to yellow. So I've changed tactics. Once the white paint was dry, I decided to go in with the same charcoal paint that I used on the stencil in my last project. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a couple of coats. Now it's time to get rid of this fabric that is on the stool. I'm using this little tool. I don't know what it's called, but it works perfectly for staples. You can see how easily it grabs them and just pulls them out. So I'm gonna to continue to remove this top layer of fabric. So wouldn't you know, this has already been covered once before. This was the original. It is an embroidery piece. It's very pretty, but it's old and it kind of stinks a little bit. So I'm not going to be keeping this. This was put together with little upholstery tacks. So I'm going to need my screwdriver just to pop them up a little bit so I can pull it out of the wood. Once I got everything removed, the board was so old and it was splintering where all the staples and the nails had been in. So I just ended up taking another small piece of plywood and cutting out a square to fit the same size. I didn't have any quilt batting or any pillow stuffing available. So I just went downstairs to my family room where I've got a gazillion dollar store blankets. And I grabbed this little one that is gray. It was $4 and I'm not sad that I'm cutting this one up. I think it's going to be the perfect addition to this little stool. I'm going to cut out four different layers. Three of them are going to be the same size as the wood and then one will be a little bit bigger about an inch or so longer all the way around the edges.
To make things a little bit easier to work with, I'm just going to put a very small amount of hot glue in between all of the blanket or felt pieces because this is kind of a felt blanket. And that will just help to keep everything in place while I'm working with it. I've got all three of the pieces glued together and this fourth piece is the one that I cut a little bit larger. I wanted to do that so you wouldn't have any sharp edges on the corners of the wood. What I'm going to do now is take my staple gun and just pull up the fabric in the centers all the way around and then I'll continue to staple things together. Doing the corners is always a little bit tricky, especially when you don't have enough fabric. I probably should have cut a little bit of a larger border around, but I made it work. So I'm just folding things in. I kind of just start at the side and then fold up a little bit. You can see here that I don't have enough fabric on this one. I'll take care of that later. This larger one here, you can see just Press it down, fold it over a couple of times, and then give it a couple of staples to hold it in place. I will be cutting off any of the excess too. Here's what it looks like. I think it's turning out pretty good so far. What I'm going to do now is add the fabric. This is some gray ticking stripe fabric that I got at the fabric store just after Christmas. And I just love this. So I'm doing the right side down because of course that's what you need to do. And what I did was cut about two to three inches of extra fabric because I wanted to make sure I had enough to work with. I also want to fold it in a little bit as you can see me doing here a little bit of a hem because that will make the bottom look a lot neater again I'm just going to start by doing the center of this one and then I'll just pull it ever so slightly make sure that my lines are nice and straight along the edges and then add some more staples it's really easy to stretch this a little bit too far but because this is a stripe I want to make sure that I don't stretch it too much then the stripes won't be straight. Then I'll check every once in a while to make sure that I don't have it too stretched and that I'm going to cut off any of the excess felt so it's not so bulky in the corner. And then I'll do the same technique. Fold it up, fold it over a couple of times and staple it in place. For any of the excess, I'll just trim that off with my scissors. I laid the bottom of the stool right on top of the cushion and I'm using this crochet hook with a little bit of black paint just to go through the hole to mark where the screw is going to go because I need to trim that fabric or cut a hole in that fabric to make sure that the screw can go all the way through really well. I wasn't sure how else to do this. This is something I came up with. If you have some ideas of what else I could have done, please let me know down in the comments. I ended up just using my craft knife to just cut a little slit right where the little black dot was. I'm using the same screws that were in there originally and they are flathead screws. They're really hard to work with and I don't like using that but I wasn't going to mess with the original. So what I'm doing here is again just hand turning them in with my ratchet screwdriver making sure that they're nice and snug. Next time you're at the thrift store, check out some of the stools and see if they would be good as a beginner project to get you started reupholstering some furniture. If it's got a whole bunch of different screws underneath it, pass on it. But for this one, it had just the four screws and that is a super easy beginner project. I hope you like how this stool turned out. So I've decided to flip this furniture piece that sits in my front hall slash living room area and it is time to get rid of that gold color. 
the first thing I'm going to do is cut off these spindly little legs. Um, this never stood properly. You can see how wobbly it is to begin with. So I'm actually going to just use my hacksaw and cut these off. I have some other wood legs that I'm going to attach later. I'm just going to drill a pilot hole for these because the legs that I'm going to be replacing already have the screw portion of it and so this will just make it really easy to attach them. I'm going to use Rust-Oleum chalked paint in charcoal and I'll give all of the legs two coats. All of the legs are on and secured, so now it's time to paint the bottom portion of the cabinet. I'm using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white and my most favorite chalk paint brush, a Bennett chalk paint brush, and this is the round one. I'm using a chalk paint brush because I do want this paint to go on really nice and smooth. I don't need any texture on it. And these chalk paint brushes are just absolutely amazing. They make the paint go on so nice and smooth. And you can see that the coverage is really fast. Like it comes on really, really quickly. It doesn't take long to finish a whole piece. When you're done watching my video, I would love it if you would go down into my description box, click on that playlist link, make sure you watch Mom and Yvonne's videos and everyone else's. I am sure you're going to see a bunch of great projects. The cabinet has four drawers, so I will also be using my Rust-Oleum chalked in linen white to paint these. I'm going to paint a little bit on the inside as well, just so you can not see the original wood when you open the drawer. So again, look at how lovely that chalk paint brush just gives you that coverage so quickly. I just love these chalk paint brushes. I tend to only use them when I'm doing furniture or larger wood pieces. It just makes everything go really quickly. I've done two coats of the white on the body of this cabinet. So now I'm going to work on the top. I'm going to start with the base of the charcoal and now I'm using my rough brush. So this is just a dollar store brush and the reason I'm using that is I want to see some brush strokes. I want this to look like weathered wood so the brush strokes are going to help me create that texture. I'll just be doing one fairly thick coat of the chalk paint. The base coat is completely dry and I'm going to start with chalked cocoa bean which is a beautiful dark chocolate color. It actually looks like icing or ganache which is something that you could put on a cake but don't eat it even though it looks good. What I'm doing is dry brushing so I'm going to put some paint on my brush dab some of it off and then I just get a little bit. Now you can see that there's a couple of spots here that went on pretty heavy. I'm not going to worry about it because I'll be layering lots of different colors and I'll be able to correct anything that I make a mistake with. Here you can see some of the texture from the original brush strokes. I'm going to now dry brush with my second color, which is also a Rust-Oleum chalked paint color. This one is country gray. I just have a teeny little bit left. That's why it's in the jar. So I'm going to do the same thing, dab some paint on, brush it off, and then go across and you can really see the texture of those brush strokes coming out right now. And it makes it look like real wood. The next color I'm using is black and I'm just going to put this in a few different spots. I don't want it all over the piece. 
I'm going to keep layering the colors until I get the look that I'm happy with. Everything's dry and I've put it all together. I'm going just with the dry brush paint that was left on my brush. I'm just gonna go around the edges of each of the drawers all around the sides and on the all of the four corners of the dresser itself. I totally love how this piece turned out. It's amazing what a little bit of paint can do. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects today and got some inspiration to do a little painting with some old items that you may have laying around at home. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I'd love it if you could hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. Bye for now.